Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about programming languages. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a if a company tends to use a particular programming language that I don't know, how might I convince them that I can pick it up quickly on the job? It depends on the company and it depends on uh, usually two factors. Uh, one part is the company, uh, how how great of an understanding they have of software development and the other part is your CV and your past experiences usually. Let me explain that a little bit. So if you're dealing with a company who has mainly incompetent management and hire, hiring people, uh, like interviewers and things like that, it's, there's no way you can do it. Because the uh, it's sort of like, how do I put this? It's sort of like from you know when I go and I buy medicine, uh, there are different brands of say pain pills. They have the same ingredients and everything. It's just that I'm ignorant of all of these things. So when my doctor tells me I should be buy this specific thing, the pharmacist might uh, might need to help me and explain that. Okay, yeah, I don't have that specific brand of these like pain pills or whatever, but I have this brand, which are the same things, because they know that it doesn't really matter which brand. One is maybe even a little bit cheaper than the other, but they contain the same things. It's just that I, as an ignorant person, I think that it's different, because I don't know any better. And the same thing goes here, where you might have interviewers and like people in a company where they don't understand that the difference between... Like, I'm going to take a silly example, but the difference between... Java and C sharp. Well, sure, you can absolutely make an argument that it is a fairly big change, but conceptually it might not be. Or take something closer to home, the differences between Java and Scala. There's a difference there, but it's not insurmountable or Python and P and uh, Ray, uh, Ray Ruby and things like that. Because there, let's be honest here, guys, there's always a transition cost. It's not like if, like, just because you know one language or another language then it's like automatically makes you good at another language it takes a little while but it's usually not that much of a challenge in comparison to learning something from scratch so that's really what it comes down to where whether or not the people in your company understands that yeah if you know one program programming language it's sort of not the biggest challenge in the world to transition but that might not also be the case because now we bring us to the other side which is are you the sort of person who can learn a new programming language that is what it really comes down to because if you're really honest with yourself uh, you might be the sort of person that well I truly feel sorry for these people because uh, when well, I feel sorry for myself when companies hire these people where they, they're not actually real software developers they're just you know they, they are a one stack person and the reason why they're one stack is because they have the intelligence to use one and only one tool one set of everything and they have no interest whatsoever to learn anything else such a person is really, really annoying to work with because you think that just because you know you, you have a software developer, you have someone who can just you kind of move seamlessly between technology. No, absolutely not. I've worked with tons of developers who are completely point useless uh, on uh, at literally everything except the one thing that they have been doing. And it's super annoying. It is so annoying because usually the sh the realities of it's like the realities of software development is that what you want is not a person who knows a tool. You want a person who understands technology and has the intelligence to make things happen, not just to use a specific thing. It's sort of like you as I mean, if we take an extreme example, if you hire someone who only knows CSS, that person is practically worthless in comparison to someone who knows CSS and 
back-end development or something like that. You might certainly have someone who is a specialist in something, but I hope that you understand my point, where if you want to actually convince someone that you can learn quickly on the job, you sort of have to have a profile where you've done that. And you can sort of prove that you are a diverse software developer. If you've only been working with one single stack for the longest time, it's uh, harder for you to convince someone that you can pick up a new set of tools. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can't, it's just that that's something that you should consider. I've had uh, interviews with companies where they have, as a requirement, which was kind of funny actually, they have. They, it's actually said on the job application, you have to have a least certain amount of years, like I think four or seven or something like that, and a proven track record of working in multiple languages. Because in their stack, like in their ecosystem, they needed software developers who knew, I think they, the new stuff, that they were migrating to Golang from, I think it was like a hybrid system of Java and Python or something like that. And as you can imagine, in such an instance, they, they can't just hire a Python developer and a Java developer and a Go developer. They actually have to have someone who has the capabilities of working across stacks. And trust me when I say this, guys, it's really, really difficult to find people that are so good or so passionate and like actually do take the time to learn more than the bare minimum or like so forth and have them like do that sort of work it's it's usually very easy to find someone who just knows one single thing because that is the traditional mindset of someone who's just doing it for the money but the really passionate software developers and the people who really are worth the the worth the effort they usually have more to them than like the ability to just do one single thing and so that's sort of the thing that you have to that, that you can do you can prove that you have transitioned between different tools and you've tried out different types of technologies and that you're not like just a one string band you're like you're a one you, that you don't just have one thing in in your knowledge backpack or your cv and so forth so what i want you to take away from this is that the ways that you can usually convince a company that you can learn a new language on the job is one or two things. First and foremost, the company needs to believe and understand that it is possible for someone who knows one stack to pick up another stack. Uh, because if they don't believe it, if they're ignorant or like they're sort of narrow-minded, they're not going to do that. There's nothing you can do because in essence you're trying to convince somebody that you can pick up the job, the, the, something on the fly which is not unlike the sort of challenges a junior software developer has when they're trying to get a company to take a chance on them. The thing that you can do that you have control over is to structure your CV with proof of like, I mean, there's nothing stopping you from doing side projects in the specific language and sort of making, and maybe you don't have professional uh, like experience working with a specific stack or a specific language, but you can still do side projects and other, other things and sort of fill up your CV with sort of other relevant things and as long as you have a background of either you're working in multiple languages or something that sort of indicates that you have you've been around a little bit you've done some traveling you've tried out different tech stacks and so forth and so forth then people are more likely to believe that you can do that again but if you only stick to one single tool and you really only let's say work in WordPress your entire career it's gonna be harder for you to swing that you're this sort of trans like uh, abroad can move over and like work on anything type of person because it doesn't really reflect so uh, reflect that that does not reflect is not reflected in your cv have a great day